Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Now answering question number 11 from the um, P4 textbook exercise 5A. This is from the International A-Level textbook from Edexcel. And this is Pearson's Edexcel. And this is exercise 5A, which is about uh, chapter on differentiation. And here, question number 11, it says a curve has parametric equations x equals cosine t and y equals a half sine 2t, where t is between 0 and 2 pi. We've got to first find an expression for dy dx in terms of t. So we know that dy dx in terms of t can only be found if we use the parametric equations. We don't need to make this into Cartesian form because we'll end up with dy dx in terms of x. So we want to have it dy dx in terms of t, so we have to use the parametric equations. So dy dx is equal to, if we think about it by the chain rule, dy dt times dt dx. Okay, so dy dt times dt dx will leave us with dy dx. So we see that um, x equals cosine t. So dx dt, well, if you differentiate the cosine of an angle, we get minus the sine of the same angle. It's one of our standard results that we should know. And then we have uh, y equals um, a half sine of the angle 2t. So when we find dy dt, it's going to be a half times the cosine of 2t, but then multiplied by the differential of what's inside the function. Here we have some function inside the function, so we multiply by the differential of 2t, which is 2. The 2 cancels with the half, so we got dy dt is going to be cosine of 2t, okay? So one of the things a lot of people get confused with is what do what do we do, you know, why don't we differentiate this half? Well, it's part of this term. You know, it's like when you have 3x squared, you don't say let's differentiate the 3, become 0, the whole thing. No, it's 3x squared. But if it was 3 plus x squared, yes, we differentiate the 3, become 0, and then you differentiate 2x because they're separate terms. And they're the same term, whether it's differentiating or integrating, you know, we don't treat them like separately. This is part of this whole term. So half times sine 2t becomes a half times cosine 2t times 2. All right, so now, uh, so therefore, we can say that this is equal to dy dt, which is cosine of 2t, times 1 over dt dx um, is going to be the opposite, is going to be the reciprocal of this, so it's going to be times minus 1 over sine t. So you end up with the cosine of 2t divided by, or minus cosine of 2t divided by sine of t. Okay, this is um, good enough for us. This is dy dx in terms of t. We don't need to simplify it or anything. Uh, don't Just make sure that we know that there's a minus here. That's important. Okay, so that is dy dx for this function. All right? And dy dx is, of course, the gradient function, so that might help us in the next part of the question, which it does, because it's asking us to find the equation of the tangent to the curve at point A, where t equals pi over 6. So we know that dy dx, which is a gradient function, as we just de deduced, is equal to negative cosine of 2t over the sine of t. Okay, so now we can say at A, t equals six uh, pi over 6, sorry, as I told us. So that means the coordinates of A, which are x, A, and y, A, can be found by replacing... Um, t by pi over 6 in these two. So we, we can say the x coordinate at a is going to be the cosine of pi over 6. Now the cosine of pi over 6, now pi over 6 is like uh, 30 degrees. The cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. All right, if you want to just make sure, we can make sure the calculus is in radian mode and we can put cosine of pi over 6. Some of these exact values we should know. Okay, that gives us root 3 over 2, as I said. And the y-coordinate at A can be found by using a half sine of 2 times pi over 6, which is pi over 3. The sine of pi over 3 is also root 3 over 2, but then a half of that is root 3 over 4. So again, we can confirm that if we want to. We have a half times the sine of 2 pi over 6, Okay, and that gives us root 3 over 4, as we mentioned. Okay, and of, of course, a tangent. What is a tangent? Okay, so say this is the curve. Okay, say this is the point A. All right, a tangent is a straight line which just touches or brushes past the curve at that point. Okay, so the tangent and the curve share two things. 
they share the point A, okay, and they also share the gradient at the point A. So the gradient of the curve at point A, okay, so you can say the gradient of the tangent is equal to dy dx at A. Okay, so the gradient of the tangent at A is equal to the dy dx at A. Okay, so if we can find dy dx at A, so we can say dy dx is equal to when t equals pi over 6, dy dx is minus cosine of 2 times pi over 6, which is um, pi over 3, over the sine of pi over 6. Okay, so the cosine of pi over 3 is the cosine of 6, which is a half, divided by sine of 6 is also a half, so it's minus a half over a half, which is minus 1. And again, we can confirm that in the calculator if we want to. We can say minus, and we can say cosine of pi over 3 divided by the sine of pi over 6. The sine of pi over 6. Okay, and that gives us minus 1. So the, that means the gradient of the tangent is equal to minus 1, and the point A is the point root 3 over 2 and root 3 over 4. Okay, so now we can find the equation of the tangent at A by using our formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I have y minus root 3 over 4 equals m, which is minus 1 times x minus root 3 over 2. Okay, so we could put this in um, the form. Let's just get rid of this. It's minus x plus root 3 over 2. So we could write in the form where we write it as ax plus by plus c equals 0. If we multiply everything by 4, this is going to become 4y minus root 3 equals minus 4x plus 2 root 3. And then if we bring everything to one side, 4x plus 4y, and you're going to have plus, uh, that's minus, oh, it's going to be minus 3 root 3. Minus 3 root 3 equals 0. Or we can write it in the form y equals mx plus c, in which case you'll have y equals minus x, and we'll have root 3 over 2 plus root 3 over 4. Okay, so that's going to give me root 3 over 2 plus root 3 over 4. That's going to give me um, plus 3 root 3 over 4. Okay, so that's an equation of the straight line in y equals mx plus c form, and that's in the, the other form that we have. Okay, now for part c. It says the lines L1 and L2 are, f are two further distinct tangents to the curve. Given that L1 and L2 are both parallel, um, are both parallel to the tangent of the curve at point A, find the equation of line 1 and line 2. Okay, so they're both parallel to the tangent of the curve at point A. That means line 1 and line 2, they have the gradient is equal to negative 1, the same as the gradient of the tangent to the curve at A. Right? So they both have that same gradient. That means... Okay, add the, the gradient of these two points satisfy the equation minus cosine 2t over sine t is equal to negative 1. They both satisfy this equation. So we can now find uh, what those two points are or the value of t at those two points by solving this equation. So we can say that, this, therefore this we can say cosine 2t over sine t equals 1. Get rid of the minus sign. Okay. And that means cosine 2t equals sine of t. All right. And we can say that uh, cosine 2t minus sine t equals 0. Now, I know the cosine of 2t using the double angle formula is going to be, remember this is the same as cosine squared t minus sine squared t from the double angle formula. So if I want to express it in terms of sine t so that I have the same ratio all the way through, this is the same as 
1 minus sine squared t minus another sine squared t. So it's 1 minus 2 sine squared t. So I can replace the cosine 2t with 1 minus sine squared t. So I have 1 minus 2 sine squared t, sorry, minus sine t is equal to 0. Now, if I multiply everything by minus 1, I end up with 2 sine squared t plus sine t minus 1 equals 0. So let me say let let's b equal sine t. I won't use x because we already have x in the parametric equation. So this will be 2b squared plus b minus 1 equals 0. So let's try to factorize this. Okay, we have uh, 2b squared and you have minus 1. When you multiply them, you get minus 2b squared. When you add them, you get plus 1, plus b. So that means you're going to have 2b and minus b. So it'll be plus 2b and minus 1b, right? Multiply them, you get this. You get this, sorry, and you add them, you get that. Yeah. So the common factor here from these two is 2 and b. So 2b times b is 2b squared. 2b times plus 1 is 2b, and b times minus 1 is minus b. So you end up with 2b minus 1 times b plus 1 equals 0. So we can say... So we can say that b equals as a half, or b equals minus 1. So we know that b is sine t. So we can say that either sine t is equal to a half, or sine of t equals negative 1. So when sine t equals a half, then t is equal to inverse sine of a half. Okay, inverse sine of a half is pi over 6. And that's the, that's the, uh, that's the, that's the point A. We know that already. But with the sine curve, there's other points also where the sine of the angle equals a half between 0 and 2 pi. And so we've just got that one. There's one over here, which is going to be pi minus pi over 6. Okay, because it's, remember, it's like symmetrical. That's pi over 6. That's also pi over 6. So this is pi over 6 less than pi. This is pi over 6 more than 0. That's the angle we've got. So we've got um, 6 pi over 6 minus pi over 6. That's 5 pi over 6. So that's one of the points in our range. So that's when t equals 5 pi over 6. That's one of the tangents that we need. This one we already have as a, this is a. Okay, this is another one. And when sine t equals negative 1, well, that's going to be over here. And we know that that's when it's uh, 270, which is uh, 3 pi over 2. Okay, so that's when t equals 3 pi over 2. So the three solutions here, this one is a, this one is the other point, and this one is the other point. So these are the other two points where in our range where we have the same gradient. Okay, so we know the gradient already is minus 1 in, both of the, in all of those points. So we need to find the point. So we can find the point when t equals 5 pi over 6. We'll find what the point is. We have x equals the sine of t, wasn't it? x equals sine t, cosine t. So let me just bring this down so I don't get mixed up. So we know x is cosine t. So x is equal to the cosine of... 5 pi over 6 and the y coordinate is going to be a half times the sine of 5 pi over 6. Okay, so we can work these out. We can just stick them in the calculator if we want. So we have cosine of 5 pi over 6. Okay, so that gives us negative root 3 over 2 and a half times the sine of 5 pi over 6. So we have 1 over 2 times the sine of 5 pi over 6. And that gives us a quarter. Okay, so that's one of the points. So one of the tangents, okay, did they give them their name? They didn't, did they? Line 1. Okay, so let's say this is line 1. Okay, the gradient of line 1 is equal to uh, sorry, the, the point line 1 is equal to, we already know the gradient. The, the point line 1 is minus root 3 over 2 and a quarter. And for line 2, when t equals 3 pi over 2, we have x equals and y equals. So you have cosine of 3 pi over 2 and you have a half times the sine Okay, there's a mistake here. 
that should be 5 pi over 3 here. Let me fix that. This would be half times uh, the sine of 3 pi um, of 3 pi. Half times the sine of 3 pi. Right? Because 3 pi over 2 multiplied by 2. So half sine of 3 pi. That's going to be 0. But here, this, should, this, this one should have been 5 pi over 6, right? 5 pi over 3. So um, please excuse me for that mistake. That's wrong. Okay, that should be in half times sine of 5 pi over 3, because it's, it's 2 times this, right? 2 times this. So that would be in 5 pi over 3, which should not give you a quarter. It gives you minus, minus root 3 over 4, okay? So we should have got here minus root 3 over 4. And this should have been 5 pi over 3. That's minus root 3 over 4. Okay, that's... You've got to be really careful about these problems. All right, so cosine of 3 pi over 2. <coughs> okay, so the cosine of 3 pi over 2, well, we should know that that's going to be basically, this goes like down here, minus 1, it should be 0. Okay, it's going to be 0. Okay, just to confirm it, cosine of 3 pi over 2. That should give us zero, okay, as we know. So that's zero, and this is also zero because it's a half of sine of three pi, a half of sine of three pi, okay. Um, but yeah, so that that would be zero, and this is also going to be zero because um, the sine of three pi is also uh, zero, okay. And is this in our range, by the way? Yes, it is because for this we got to take. We can use angles anywhere up to 4 pi. All right, so we can use 3 pi here, okay? Because it says 2t, that's why. All right, so now, that's fine. So there we have um, the this of this other line, line 2. It goes through the origin, all right? So that's pretty simple. So we can say the gradient of the lines. We could say the gradient of line 2, which we call line 2, is equal to minus 1. It goes through the origin. So therefore, it's y equals minus x. Okay, so that's one of them. That's one answer. And the gradient of line 1 is minus 1, and it goes through the points minus root 3 over 2 and minus root 3 over 4. So we have y minus minus, which is plus, root 3 over 4 equals m, which is minus 1 times x minus minus, which is plus, root 3 over 2. So we write it in the form y equals mx plus c. We have y plus root 3 over 4 equals minus x, minus root 3 over 2 so y is equal to minus x and it's going to be minus this is going to be 2 this is this will be 2 root 3 over 4 minus another root 3 over 4 minus root 3 3 root 3 over 4 so there's the other equation okay so here's the two lines which are tangents to the same curve at different points but with the same gradient of minus one as the other one that they already told us about so there's the answer to this question i think i made a bit of a mistake over there but we, we found out that mistake and continued all right so now um hopefully this is the correct answer let me just check quickly okay so the answers from the back of the book are as follows so you have minus cosine 2t over t which is a Minus x plus 3 root 3 over 4, which I think was correct. Minus x plus root 3 over 3 over 4, good. And finally, the last answer we got here, we have y equals minus x, that's correct. And y equals minus x minus root 3, 3 root 3 over 4. Okay, good. So all the answers are correct. So that concludes this question from the book, um, exercise 5a, question number 11. Other questions from this particular um chapter of the book um, that I've answered, you'll find in the playlist that link will be over here. Other questions from the topic of uh, parametric equations, okay, I'll put in the playlist over here. Other questions from differentiation of P4, I'll put in the playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.